Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, and it's time to look at Hearthstone. Today is another budget deck, this one popularized by a Twitch streamer named Raynard. This is a Warrior Rush deck. And I want to go into some details with it a little bit before I show you how it works, because this is a deck that is meant to be played on the ranked ladder. Now granted, it's a little bit later in the meta, so maybe some changes have been made to counter it, but I still have some pretty good success with it, especially considering the amount of uh, commons and not legendaries that are in it. So I want to talk a little bit about the deck, the construction, and maybe some substitutions that you can make. So let's get started and then I'll show you a game. This is a rush deck. Your goal is to knock down your opponent's health as quickly as possible. However, Warrior has a lot of nice weapons, such as Arcanite Reaper, such, which I really think when you play it, you should have the Arcanite Reaper Ho going on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you didn't play WoW early enough. Uh, Fiery War Axe as well. Uh, just good things to maybe control the board a little bit as long as a Wrathy Weaponsmith. Meanwhile, you take your creatures to hit to the face. Uh, Argent Commander is a good finisher. Nightblade is very nice because the three damage bypass is taunt, and you'll be seeing a lot of taunts out there. But otherwise, look at this charge creature, uh, creature that's buffed by we weapons, creature that can't be targeted, creature that's buffed when other creatures take damage, creature that summons itself. Uh, I do have the Ascetic Swamp who's in here right now, and that's partially because I did not have, when I was originally building this deck, stupidly enough, I did not have a single Cruel Taskmaster, and strangely I've now opened one up from a pack. But I'm going to keep the Ascetic Swampoos in here, at least for now. And the reason I was keeping it in there before was because I was playing a bunch of Hunter Rush decks when I was first making this deck. And yes, I'll have a Hunter Rush video as well. But this is a great counter to Eagle Horn Bow, because it does destroy a weapon. But your finishers with this one are Heroic Strike and uh, Mortal Strike because those are direct damage you can do the face. However, both of those are also good for bypassing taunts as well. Execute's great for taking out those big trees and other things druids like to throw out. But otherwise, this is a pretty straightforward, pretty decent to play deck. Uh, pretty simple to play deck. I don't want to say it's easy because you've, it does take skill to know when to trade and when to go for the face. But generally you want to go for the face. I beat decks with legendaries in it. If there is a legendary I'd suggest putting in there like most aggro decks it would be Mr. Leroy Jenkins but I'm not going to put it in there today just because I want to show you all what this deck looks like without legendaries because Raynard popularized this deck by saying hey you know what I'm going to show my entire stream uh, as I'm playing that you can actually make it to legendary with a deck that is totally budget. So let's go ahead and play our free hugs deck. I am ranked 15. This is in the middle of a reset. Highest rank I've ever made it to is 9. But that's more because of a, more of a factor of not having as much time to play. If I had had time to play, I probably would have made it up to about uh, 5 or 6. But that's mainly because, I mean, I make some derpy mistakes from time to time. My arena play shows me that. But, you know what, we're going to go ahead and get this started, and you want to mulligan very aggressively for here. And this is actually a pretty horrible opening hand because you do not want uh, things like that. You want low cost cards, low cost, low cost. Don't want Nightblade, Fiery War X turn 2 is decent. I'm curious to see if this is going to be a hand lock, which is a deck that's been popularized recently by another Twitch streamer, but that one's goal is to keep as many cards in your hand as possible and then drop a bunch of giants down. Which will be interesting to see if that's going to be a counter here. But we're rank 15, so it's still open season. Could be a Void Walker turn one, which would not be pleasant, but it would mean I get the Fiery War Axe out right away. Blood Imp. Okay. I don't really have a lot to fight with Blood Imp here. Okay, so this is a uh, Warlock Rush deck. That's interesting to me. What that means is that I'm going to play Fiery War Axe here and save uh, my turn 4 play for Swamp Ooze and Blood Sail Raider. And I'm just going to try and use the War Axe to take on these guys first. So this is going to be a good exercise to see because this deck is a... Uh, it's a most, it's not a mid-range deck. It's a, uh, and when I say mid-range, I just mean one that starts out early and then goes for the throat. But yeah, this is this is your standard uh, Warlock fun, so. This is gonna be a uh, fun turn where I'm not actually, well, I guess I could play the Fiery War Axe and just kill something else this turn. The more important thing is that I'm gonna wanna start going for the face eventually, and right now, the problem is that this is a Warlock Rush deck, so he's gonna wanna go. For the face as well so I'm just gonna try and clean up here a little bit not great value maybe a kind of a misplay for some of y'all to say and you know what I am happy for you all to tear apart my play I I can handle it 
So if that's if you feel that I'm doing something wrong in this game or if I'm playing this deck incorrectly by trying to control the board, because you can see that would have been devastating if he just had everything together. But he's probably going to go straight for the face here now. And this is where Whirlwind would be nice to have. But unfortunately, it's not a card that I have. So Moral Strike's going to be nice. I will play this right now. And it may be time for me to start armoring up in just a little bit so key question now is do I try and control the board a little bit and leave the one guys on because he probably has some nastier cards up there and I think the answer is yes I do want to control the board a little bit more and then start going for here because uh, if you take out the rush early for the warlock it doesn't have a lot left because you can card you can card starve a warlock pretty quickly of course, they do have life tap, but that just plays into what I want to do here a little bit. So I am going to be not playing the Nightblade just yet. And you can see here, I'm starting to make them panic a little bit. This is not necessarily what you want to do as a lock here, but let's see, is that Mortal Coil? Yep. So he's going for the extra card. That's okay. Not fantastic. So this is good. So this isn't really a Warlock Rush deck. So he did play a lot of Murlocs. And now I'm not going to be able to kill that guy anyway. So... This is, this is how we're going to do this. We're just going to drop a bunch of stuff on the board. If he has a Hellfire, might as well get it now. Go for the face. One mistake you can make with Blood Cell Raiders, attacking with your weapon before dropping it. Please don't do that. Now, 4-3 for 2 is awesome. There's better things to do. But my goal, at least with this deck, is to try and play one card per turn. So this is a little bit of an atypical game for me here. So he, oh, that's nice. Knife Juggler, Young Priestess. And hopefully he doesn't take this out, which is unfortunately probably what's about to happen. I really don't want to have to moral strike something. But this is interesting, because this is a deck that's really going to be trying to buff up his own units to health it. But it doesn't look like he's playing Taunt, so... Question is, is he going to play a card to take out the Blood Sail Raider? Yes, he is. So Soulfire, interesting. So he's kind of fucked up my hand a little bit. But there we go. Interesting deck, and both of these units are probably going to buff the Knife Juggler. No, they're going to buff each other. That was lucky for me. Alright, now the question is that I can execute this, or I can Mortal Strike it. Probably better to execute it and just drop the Knight Blade, because I want to save that Mortal Strike for uh, when things get dicey. So let's just go ahead and do this. Pop that. Because this is a Weenie Rush deck, from the looks of it, there's not going to be a lot of great execute targets, so you might as well just do that. And then, once again, if that's a misplay, eh, whatever. Now, like I said, he is going to be able to play, get some more cards out, as there's the taunt. And there's... That's why you get rid of all the other Murlocs, because it is really easy to get overwhelmed with this deck. And now it's here, so he's a four-something. Not fantastic. Alright, well... Probably time to start armoring up just a little bit here, and I do think I want to actually. Yeah, let's mortal strike this. Just give that one as much health as possible. I will be top decking from here on out, but you know what? I really need some board presence. And once again, this is kind of the interesting counter to this deck a little bit is that you throw taunts out, you throw creatures out. My goal is just to go straight to the face of this deck and he's done a really fantastic job of pre preventing that. But once again, if he keeps playing this shit, like all of this murloc just wonky craziness, I'm not really going to have a choice. Once again, this is where a whirlwind would be nice. This is where a hunter rush deck would be really fantastic. So kind of an atypical game. He's going to start doing damage to himself, so that's okay. And question now is, is that is he going to try and take out my Nightblade? I'd really love to get a weapon right now, to be honest. Because this could get this could get bad in a hurry. Alright, so what are we going to do here? We are just probably going to do some damage here. Take you out. And that's going to get you all up. This guy is going to be... I just want to make this a creature that he's going to have to deal with. And I think at 4 health he's probably going to have to deal with it. Probably better to start going for the face with you. Now you'd love to go for it with the Nightblade, but... I mean, my goal from here on out is just to fight, fight, fight. He's going to get himself down low if he keeps life tapping here. So let's see here. Is he going to mortal coil it? Yes, he is. Alright, so that's unfortunate for me. But those frothing berserkers are kind of like knife jugglers in that they will just go all the time. So... 
Once again, just Murlocs. It's it's interesting playing this deck against a Murloc deck because... Okay, that's an interesting move. I'm a little worried about what else he has. Okay, so that's a good card. Gotta start thinking about win conditions here. So I can charge and do nine damage. Considering I can't kill anything on the board without killing myself, that's probably the best move if I keep armoring up. So let's go and do that. This Divine Shield's gonna be nice. Like I said, it's just, you want to rush it eventually. He's tapped himself down really low, and I've just kind of weathered the storm a little bit. Although, once again, you got to watch out with uh, Murloc decks because they can flip the script real quick. Maybe it was a little greedy for me to go for that instead of the board, but now he has to think about this in general. So, I'm trying to trade out the one creature he can. I don't know if he wants to take out the Young Priestess or not. That's kind of atypical to see that and the Blood Imp in this deck, although it's an interesting play. Um, it's not really standard, if that makes sense. So he is gonna actually, because he's got to do something to try and take this on. Oh, okay. I am. Uh, I'm in trouble. All right. I've got to do 15 damage, and I've got to do it in a fucking hurry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. May I have another. We'll see. Um may still be able to pull this off. I have not actually had a Warlock uh, pull that one on me, so let's see here. My one upside is that I still have Divine Shields. He can summon 6-6 six, six Infernals as much as he wants to. Um, but like I said, I just gotta hope for... That's not a good card to face, because he can take out one of... He can pop one of my Divine Shields. I need to top deck an Arcanite Reaper now, <laughs> pretty much. Okay, Murloc Raider. Good. I want those to hit me in the face. I do not want those to hit these guys. <sighs> Thing is, is that he obviously doesn't have a taunt there. It might be a Hellfire, and Hellfire would be a terrible, terrible card for him to use right now. So there's one down. But if he attacks there, he's just going to kill me. So, or he's just going to kill himself next turn. Unless he has something else here that'll heal him, like a Drain Life or something. Maybe. Is that what he's got? Oh, power overwhelming. Okay, this is a uh, desperation play, but the right play. Because now I've got to get something, and I did. Oh, top deck heaven. Well played. Oh, Jesus. Uh, Lord Jaraxxus, you are a, a scary motherfucker, but you're dead. So there you go. That wasn't really a rush deck, but notice how many legendaries my deck had. Zero. And he, uh, he had more than zero. So, fun, interesting, let's play another one. I like doing kind of two games with this just to let you all see a little bit what the deck's about. And like I said, I do have some other decks that I want to show you. Budget Watchers, interesting, we'll do that in a later video. It's not it's not optimized at all, but yeah. I'll do a Hunter video and I'll do a Rogue video because there's some, there's some interesting decks that are floating around there, especially as people are starting to give uh, the kind of the lower rarity cards more chance instead of just pumping their decks with legendaries because if you've been playing since October and actually got my beta key back in October and missed it because I'm a stupid idiot um you probably have had more time to get enough dust to get legendaries uh so far I've opened enough packs through arena <coughs> excuse me to get three legendaries two of them were millhouse mana storm and another one was uh God, the ape one that throws bananas, which is a good card, but it's, it's pretty much that was 1200 dust. So let's see here. This is a this is probably going to be more of an aggro opening here. I'll, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I like keeping the weapon smith just because I don't have a weapon, and it gives me a good later play. But I think this time, uh, because it's a rogue, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for both of these. What's the worst that happen? I lose a star. All right. So it's here. That was terrible. I should have just kept what I had. But, because you want to get rid of the Mortal Strikes as much as you can, at least I have a turn one play. I'd much prefer to play this with a weapon, but if I have nothing else, I'll just play without it. I really hope I get something turn two. I have Leper Gnomes. I have all kinds of stuff I can play. Arcanite Reaper's good to have. It's Against a Rogue, it's pretty much going to be straight to the face. So this will be interesting to see if this is aggro versus aggro right here. So Leper Gnome turn this turn. Yes, I have one Mana Crystal left, but... Whatever. I'll let him have his fun. 
Now, the question is, is he going to backstab it or something? That'd be interesting. If he's just going to knife it. Oh, interesting. So he's going to go for that play. All right. So he doesn't want to touch my leper gnome either, which I guess makes some sense. Oh, no, they're just going to go for each other. So give me a big hug, and we all take damage, because that's Battle Cry. Now, that's interesting that the Battle Cry resolved like that. So let's see. Does he have Does he have a shiv? No, he's not going to have a shiv for one. All right. So it's a lot to talk about all at once. I do like, like Rogue because you get all kinds of combos like that. And I guess the better question at this point is that this Argent Squire is going to die if I do this. So I might as well... I guess the question is, I hate dropping the Blood Cell Raider, but I really would rather have something on the board right now. I can play the Corcon Elite next turn, but having an empty board against a Rogue, while not awful, is not great either. And that is like the least scientific analysis I could have possibly given for that. Hey, if something is not awful, it's not great. Good job! You're smart. So this is, uh, I'm not sure what kind of rogue deck you want to call this, but I'll just tell you right now that he played the Loot Hoarder just pretty much means that I'm going to go for the face here. I could play the Weapon Smith, but I'd rather do that a little bit later, maybe when I have a smaller creature to drop in association with it. Right now, the Corcon Elite, he's going to have to dagger up to kill it with the Loot Hoarder. So we'll do that. Plus, Arcanite Reaper is a great turn 5 fight if you're going straight for the face. But interesting thing is that as this game gets a little bit older and more people get cards, it's just kind of like you get to rank 15 maybe a month or so ago. It was just easy, easy, easy pickings going up to rank 15 because everybody was, uh, uh, it was the first season of kind of the ranked and pretty much everyone who had all the cards were in Legendary kind of duking it out. But now it's just along the lines of you expect everybody from about rank 20 on to have cards. Lots of cards. So it's a well, little bit right. tougher for new players to get in here and... He's saying well played. Does that mean we're given up here? No, so there, that's good. That means there's cards that he does not have that he wants. Oh, c -c -c combo. All right. That doesn't worry me very much. If he wants to make trades with my cards, that's fine. But you're going to see next turn is that what I really am going to do here, and that just seals my point home even more. Okay, look at this. Four damage, two damage. That's six. Five more there, that's 11. This is going to be over two turns unless he has something that can... Uh, it's going to be 10 damage essentially, so... With the Mortal Strike next turn... Pretty much setting myself up for a uh, early win here. And this is how you want to rush. So kind of the last game was, hey, kind of the counters, one of the counters you see, two rush decks. Not an optimal Murloc deck, but a Lord Jirax is kind of the big what the F in that deck. Um, this one's just more, unfortunately, Rogue, unless he has a taunt right here, which would really help him out if he does. And you're going to see he's going to trade as much as possible here. Actually, if he's going to dagger one of my people, it's going to play into my hands, but he's not. I'm a little worried about three, but he doesn't... Oh, Blade Fury. Okay, that's a good play. I like Blade Fury. Not everybody does. You don't want to do the one Blade Fury if you can, but yeah. Heroic Strike... But yeah, pretty much. And the only reason I'm doing that is just to let him know. Not to be a dick, but just to let him know. I had the cards to kill him anyway. Top deck to Heroic Strike. And that's enough, so. Win streak! Bonus star! Yay! So now I'm a raid leader, which is actually kind of a horrible card. But it's okay, because, you know what? I went for the face and won before he could possibly get any big things out. Because if you let games go on with a rogue, you're just playing into their hands. There's a lot of control rogues out there now. So let's look at the deck one more time. Because I think that is fairly, fairly successful. Two wins on an impromptu live commentary is pretty nice, especially for how I play. But like I said before, there's some there's some key cards. Archon Squire is good because it draws attention, and otherwise one damage over time doesn't seem like a lot, so people ignore the card. But it can trade well with other one health minions like the Leper Gnome there, or just, you know, keep doing one damage. It helps over time. Acidic Swamp Ooze is pretty good for the meta that I was facing before probably could replace it with a few things. This could be the card that gets replaced with Leroy. And like I said before, Leroy is just a uh, just a good card in general. One of the... Ah! Can't even spell it. Leroy. Leroy J -J -J Jenkins. Uh, yeah, 6-2 for 4. I can craft it right now if I want to. You know what? Let's craft it. Yay! So that way I'll have it. This is actually the first legendary I've ever crafted. Yay, Leor Jenkins. 
nice it knows the nice spittle there so I'll give you all that as a nice punctuation on the end otherwise good deck very solid deck fun to play relatively inexpensive to pick up Leroy's not necessary but it really adds to rush decks in general if you get it so that's it for now. This is Way to Fail. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope this was at least informative. Once again, if you saw mistakes in my play, feel free to eviscerate them. Just let me know. It helps me get better. If you've watched my scrolls videos, I'm very open to taking suggestions. But if you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, like, comment, whatever you feel like. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you all next time.